Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Today we have a very hands-on kind of special. You see, we appreciate a lot of you are maybe stuck at home and you're looking for projects to do. So we have a historically interesting one, right? Because about 50 years ago, Apollo 13 was about to head off to the moon and they had the mother of all quarantine projects. I mean, they weren't really quarantined, but they were stuck a yeah. long way from home and they had to make things up as they went along. So. Yeah. I need an extra pair of hands, and this is my wonderful other half. You, know, you complete me, honey. This is Amy. Aww, She's you. done a lot of things for a long time. She, mm -hmm. You know, if you like the SR71, the A12 ox cart video, she did all the research while we were driving there. It was wow. great. Amazing. Anyway. I'm amazing. <laughs> so yeah, not, a lot of you don't know, maybe not uh, know the exact details. You've probably seen Apollo 13, but the critical thing was the air right? The quality of the atmosphere was degrading over time. Yeah. So we want to build a copy of the Apollo 13 uh, air canister. So do we have the props here? Joy. Da 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 da. This is marvelous. I, uh, I asked on my Discord server if anybody could like throw together a quick 3D model and Havazik just basically threw this together in a couple of hours and then I printed it. It took like three days to print and paint and put together but this and is our garage smelled really bad mm, smells really good right <laughs> we could now get really high in our garage. we could yes so this was done on my uh prusa mark iii printer and actually it had some glitches there you can see that there's a ridge because we had a power cut halfway through and the thing didn't quite line up but it's the right size right shape it has the grid it even has airflow through the middle, so this is perfect. And it has the hole down here we are going to have to plug up. So these were the canisters that were in the command module. What these did was they had three layers. They had a felt layer that would gather dust. They had a activated charcoal layer that would remove the awful stench because, as we've talked about, astronauts have, you know, toilet issues on uh, Apollo. And then they had the all-important lithium hydroxide layer which was most of this. And the lithium hydroxide would take carbon dioxide from the spacecraft's atmosphere and remove it. So leaving the oxygen to pass on through. It also remove uh, water as they did that. Now, in Apollo 13, the command module ran out of power or they had to shut it down to conserve power. That meant that the atmospheric conditioning system wasn't running. So they, of course, were then living in the lunar module. The problem was the lunar module was designed for two people for 30 hours or thereabouts, and they had three people for about 87 hours. So they needed to figure out how to make the command module lithium hydroxide canisters work with the lunar module. And what shape were the, uh, were the canisters in the lunar module, honey? You did this. In the lunar module, yes. we're square? No, these, no, these circle, are square. Circle. Yes. I got it. You got it, right? Because so, it could only be two. Yes, but you're right. So change. we had to put a square peg mm -hmm. in, in, a, round in a round hole. Yep. And they also had to do this with only the stuff that they had in the spacecraft, right? They couldn't go down to the local hardware store to find stuff. Good news is they had gray tape, right? This is gray tape. It's all, some people might call this duct tape, but uh, it was officially called gray tape. This is going to be our stand-in for the suit hoses. So the suit would have, um, they would have two hoses that would go in on one side. We would have the atmosphere return and the atmosphere send. So one would take air in and the other would take air out. And what they did was this would this would hook into this. We have a bag. So they needed to do some surgery on these, but basically, yeah, it's a standard polythene bag. This was for the bag for the liquid cooling garments that they would wear when they were doing an EVA on the moon. Understandably, they didn't need that. What else do we have? Oh, you want this one? Yes. So there's one more thing. They were required to find... The checklist. Yeah, actually. So this is... They were required to have a stiff piece of cardboard, and the cardboard they found was the cover or it was a cue card. So I don't have any Apollo cue cards, so I made my own. Uh, it's a reminder to check your staging and fly safe, right? Yes. Okay. Hilarious. So now we're going to have to actually try and build this according to the process. So the first thing 
they had was oh, they actually started by putting on tape on the outside. And the reason was the canisters were had a sort of Teflon coating on them so they could slide in and out. So they actually had to put these belts around backwards with a sticky tape on the outside. So we're going to probably do this. We got to put this around it. Oh yes, okay, now it's sticky here. Hold it very tight because we're going to have to get it tight. Damn it, I didn't make it tight enough. It's going to fall off. Uh -oh. Ah, there, there, okay. Well, look, they, they did this uh, because they had a hard time sticking the stuff to it. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to make this into an arch over the top. So we need to cut it to size. Can you kind of get it cut? So the reason behind this is that the they want to make sure the airflow worked over the top. So, so yeah, these canisters were made by a company called Air Research. And Air Research started out by building things like turbochargers, I believe, and compressors for aircraft engines. And then in the, the Lockheed P-80 Shooting Star, they used some of their technology to cool the cargo uh, to sorry to cool the cockpit because the, the plane was so much faster it was needing a little more refrigeration so that's how they sort of got into environmental control systems that looks great cut it cut it cut it cut it the modules by the way they have two sides there's a hole in one side like this the front side should have a little handle here where you can hold it to pull it out these typically were designed to last 24 hours for three people they would ha actually have two of these running simultaneously and they would change one out every 12 hours. So one of these would last 12 hours, but they would have two in parallel. So they would each only get changed every 24 hours. And actually they were changed well before they were saturated. Uh, an interesting thing is that they would actually, because these were in the command module, they would come back to earth and some of the engineers working on the project, they would then take these apart and analyze how much lithium hydroxide had been changed to lithium carbonate and therefore figure out what parts of the mission the astronauts had been working way harder on. So they, they got the, they compiled these statistics. Oh, that is looking fabulous. That is, that is beautiful. Am I, am I hired? You are totally hired. You could totally be an astronaut. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is tape this over the top. So we need a piece of tape that goes from this over the top. So let's see if we can do this part correctly. So contrary to popular knowledge, they did actually have spare canisters for the lunar module. The problem was the lunar module spares were out on the, on the outside. So this was like the tool table that they had on the side. They would open this up and it had their tools and their canisters, it had the TV camera, and it had spare canisters. So these would normally be accessed on the surface of the moon. They couldn't do that in flight because that would have meant opening the cabin, losing air pressure, and that did limit the amount of uh, things they could do. So they decided against it and instead did this kind of crazy thing. Yeah, initially when Apollo 13 started failing, they, you know, was it Cy Liebergott was really worried about the oxygen levels. And then, you know, John Aaron came along and said, oh, but we've got tons of oxygen in the lunar module. You don't need to worry about the oxygen levels. Okay, let's try it now. Uh, 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 uh. So we just need to get it to the edge. Brilliant, brilliant. This is way more bag than we need. I, it's great, it's great. I hope we're not tearing. Oh no, there's a hole in here. Uh oh, but we're tearing down here. This is the thing. No, oh my goodness, we're gonna die in space. Yes, we got it, we got it. Oh no. Ta tape it up, tape it up. Uh, yeah, just make sure that we're ta it's got to go all the way down. I'm so glad our lives don't really depend on Yeah. This. So the reason for the card is because you're going to have a vacuum coming in here that's going off to the suit uh, filter. So they would have basically fans that would drive the air through the suits. And instead they took those tubes and put it in here and it would suck the air back through the return system. I've got a good feeling about this. I'm breathing easy already. Ah. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so the mission flight was basically, it starts to go wrong around 57 hours into the flight. 
And at that point, they were sort of approaching the moon. They needed to do their turnaround, uh, obviously get everything set up. And it wasn't until like 89 hours that they started to do this particular procedure. So you can actually go and read up the actual, you know, grounds to calm. So now you've got to Just do the- Just a day in the life. Just a day in the life. So now you've got to do another one around the bottom here, technically. I am going to start working. I'm going to start cutting a hole here for the uh, pipe. So I'm going to just cut so a just corner off the, the back. Yeah, just another one off the bottom. So now, uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to stick this through here. Oh, you know what? The next bit's going to be harder because you're going to actually have to cut, tear these down the middle in half. Uh. So I'm just going to use, this isn't technically correct, but for this, we can use fabric, we're supposed to use fabric tape, but we're just going to tie this up with regular grey tape. So they, I guess they had a different kind of tape for this. <laughs> I'm doing this from memory, uh, having seen this thing several times. <laughs> what do you remember? Tell us what you do remember, because you've been learning stuff. Um, well, I remember that the guys like who were supposed to instruct them how to build this thing, mm -hmm. they went off and got a, drank a ton of coffee, and they were all in the room, and they were like... Actually, the guy who told them to do it, I don't know who that guy was, but basically he said, like, you have to figure it out. And they went in a room and they cashed okay. it out and they came back and they're like, we know what to do. You're remembering the movie Apollo 13 rather than the real thing. Well, so Apollo 13 I, is a great movie, but it's not totally accurate. And one of my favorite scenes is this scene where they're like... <laughs> You know, this, we got to fit a square peg in a ground, round hole and they walk into the room and they just like throw a bunch of stuff on the table. We got to fit this into this yeah. using only this. So it didn't really happen. It didn't happen like, like that because they had actually figured that like out a long time ago. So, okay, so the next thing we have to do is... Well, that went to mid. A good script. Yeah, so the, you tear the pieces in half and we've got to create straps uh -huh. that go around like this. So we're going to have to tear the pieces lengthwise. This is going to be fun. Yeah, so... <laughs> fun with tape. Yes, yeah, so the original... Basically, a lot of stuff in Apollo 13 had been previously considered. I could do this for you while you're explaining. Uh, well, I think what I need you I to like do... I want, to be I want you to hold the bottom there. Because I'm going to tear it down here. So basically, a lot of the stuff in the Apollo 13 mission was figured out in advance because they would do these simulations, right? This is getting smaller and smaller. Yes, you're not doing it right. I'm not, I'm not an astronaut, obviously. For example, the whole idea of using the... Oh, no, no, don't, you, you keep holding that. <laughs> the whole idea of using the command module... Sorry, the lunar module. Okay, we're, we're doomed. Yeah, yeah, we're going to die. Yeah. Look, I'm just going to tape this on here. Oh, can you imagine doing this in zero G? Like you wouldn't even have the benefit of gravity holding it down. I think this is going to look pretty good. There, that's look, see we had to run it along there. Okay, so we need to just, ah, oh, this is not perfect. So I think it was during Apollo 10 or nine, they were doing simulations and one of them came up, someone in the back room that was running the sim was like, there's contaminated air in the command module. What are you going to do? And the, the team decided to send the astronauts into the lunar module. And they sort of got their first idea of the, the lifeboat scenario. Yeah. No, I got to tear it in half again. So I need you to hold it. I think you should, we should start with scissors. Okay, you're going to try cutting it down the middle. How about I do it, hold well, it like yeah, this? I'm not sure they would have scissors well, that good in space. Right. I think I'm going to have to redo this thing. I, I, I've got them on my hand. You're going to have to grab one from me. There we go. This is the worst replica ever so far. But here's the thing. No, I think somebody could do worse. I, I think you guys out there could all have a go at this thing. It, it yeah. sounds, it's a fun thing to do. Look for the stuff at home. Look do at we, this. Do we do that right? We're doing pretty good here. I mean, I think these things are kind of fatter than they need to be. But I think we're getting there. So there's one thing that I realize we don't have. What's that? This hole in the middle is the bypass hole. And they need to plug that up. And they used, they said, suggested a sock or a little bit of towel. Do we have something like that? Okay, so we got a, a pink cloth. 
Um, like that's fine. So we like just got square. it enough that we can stuff it in here to stop yeah. the airflow. Because this thing here, uh, if you don't plug it up, the air will flow through that and bypass the lithium hydroxide. So they needed to plug that up. Uh, instead, okay. the vents obviously run through. Okay, that's... Um, yeah, I think we might need more, but whatever. And now we, yeah, then we're going to just tape over this, uh, you know, just to hide it. I don't think we're getting quite the airflow that we need out of this, but whatever. Are we going to try it? Well, I mean, uh, there's not much to try, but Are I we think we... reenact the whole thing? Um, okay. Do you happen to have a an <laughs> air pump? I mean, I guess I could breathe through it. I have the pump that... Oh, what the heck is that? Oh my god! <laughs> Whew. Oh my god! Now I can really taste the chemicals. Oh no! That's pretty. Cool. Wow, we've invented some sort of instrument here. I totally didn't expect that. I'm trying to think of what that sounds like. It, it sounds, sounds like, like a, the whistle. It sounds like an elephant. Sort of. Wow. <laughs> sounds like an, an elephant flute. That, oh, wow, I'm getting high on this stuff. I, I, seriously. Uh, so look, this is this is what they built. And then they built two of these and they strapped them to the wall of the lunar module. And that wasn't enough to get on home on its own because you've remembered it took two of these for 24 hours normally. And so there wasn't enough lithium hydroxide in this to cover the entire trip. What happened was about 24 hours later, they did another one. But instead of going through this whole procedure, they had a new and improved procedure by then. What they did was they just kind of put another one on the bottom there. So if you imagine this is another one, the air flows through this whole one. So they would have two of these stacked in sequence. They used like cue cards to make sure that they were framed up correctly. So if you look, depending upon the time you see the... Uh, you can tell when some of the photos are taken because they either have one of these or two of these. But yeah, that is, in my mind, one of the greatest hacks in space ever. Like, that, you know, it was That's life... Really the, I'm, I'm a big fan of hacks in space. Like, so there was one of the Apollo missions where they had to uh, fix the... Uh, the dust guard, you know, the wheel guard, that went, the fenders they call them in this oh, country, yeah. on the dust fenders. yes, on the lunar on the lunar rover, and because it was like throwing dust up all in their face. And again, they used some cardboard from checklists. It was some space bunnies. Ah, uh, yeah, and they used uh, some gray tape, and they had to do this in their space. Gray suit. tape to the rescue. Again. Gray tape to the rescue. Apollo fourteen, they had to of course perform the greatest tech support call in history, and hack the computer so they could land on the moon. That was another cool one. And yeah, there's plenty of cool... There was and a there cool was, hack... Was there gray tape involved? Again? There wasn't in that one, no. <laughs> uh, and on the space station, they had this amazing hack where they had to rejoin the solar panels that had been damaged. That was a fun one as well. But yes. Yeah, I'm quite proud of this. What do you think? It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is a thing of beauty. Yeah, it got them home safely, obviously. Wow. Yes. That was exciting. It was. <laughs> I'm glad yeah. that I didn't have yeah, my... Yeah, it makes a really cool sound. Yes, I'm glad my uh, life didn't depend on it. I don't know if they ever tried making musical instruments from the hoses on the spacesuits. I think they were busy trying yeah. to survive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Apollo 13 really wasn't that much fun in the end. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing they didn't have that glue. Oh, I don't know. They probably had worse smells up there. <laughs> yeah. So yes, here's my substitute for the Apollo 13. Uh, what do you call it? It's the lithium hydroxide canister hack. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.